good morning uh, so uh, we were on uh, now our lecture number 23 uh, and on lateral dynamics of our vehicle dynamics course and today's uh, particular lecture is uh, yet another important lecture that's going to give you an important um, learning of what is called a transfer function transfer function so you see a transfer function is an important requisite to characterize any of the uh, system for that matter any of the mechanical uh, system mechanical components uh, or components of automobile or as a system as a whole a vehicle uh, characterization for everything what do you need it is something called a transfer function if you have this transfer function you would be able to come up with your uh, um, application of advanced control strategies to have some uh, control algorithms uh, like ABS or um, uh, control strategies like cruise control or today's uh, advanced uh, uh, driver assistant systems called the ADAS. Any of the control system design for your vehicle dynamics that you adopt uh, and the design, uh, basically what purpose it is to make your vehicle to listen to you and uh, even uh, make your vehicle intelligent when you forget to react uh, that has to take an action. Uh, so like an ABS or no emergency braking system and so on when you say in a system oh, important fundamental um, aspect is what is called a transfer function of the system and that's what is very important we are going to look at transfer function of our bicycle model uh, um, uh, basically two transfer function today I'm going to teach you one is uh, the one of the state variable lateral velocity transfer function another one is yaw velocity transfer function so what is transfer function? Transfer function is what is that uh, uh, output that you get for the given known input. So it is not new to you. You have looked at uh, uh, force transmissibility, displacement transmissibility, uh, the fundamental of mechanical vibration. So those are all essentially transfer function. What is that uh, you get in a vehicle level acceleration from the road input? Uh, you have looked at uh, um, what is the uh, power spectral uh, uh, power spectral density function in a vehicle for the power spectral density function of the road input so that is all whatever you had are called those transfer function so you give some input and what is that an output so that forms the basis for characterization of the system and in mathematical terms if you want to say you want to find out uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the system mathematical system equations uh, essentially that's called a model analysis in mechanical vibration field uh, you require this transfer function so uh, as we are dealing with now our lateral dynamics uh, we have looked at many important equations so my lecture today is going to summarize the equations of lateral dynamics of a passenger car and then take you uh, nicely to get uh, to know what is the transfer function how do you going to derive them is what is the objective of uh, today's particular class <laughs> right so let me do that uh, uh, now by sharing my screen so you're able to see the screen and uh, uh, i'm just taking this is uh, lecture number 23 i'm just taking you through this lecture number uh, 20 here uh, what we were doing at that time is to see and then let us uh, uh, start with today's class we look at uh, we have essentially understood the description of our vehicle through a bicycle model and very important assumption of your bicycle model is that an entire vehicle uh, weight you consider together as a as rigid body you do not consider the suspension in your system so there is no discretization of uh, sprung mass and unsprung mass that you have seen in your quarter car model uh, of your ride dynamics so that is what is uh, uh, you should uh, um, uh, look at here uh, as a basic description of bicycle model and uh, we looked at uh, first the kinematics of bicycle model we understood this lateral velocity and uh, yaw velocity in that process we have understood many important geometrical angles uh, called the slip angle in the front axle, the slip angle in the rear axle uh, tire wheel interaction or uh, as a vehicle level something called the body slip angle beta. Uh, uh, these are all uh, something that we have looked at when the moment you give a steering input delta F. 
right? And today's context of transfer function, what is that I'm going to do is, so I'm going to find out what is my yaw velocity for the given steering angle input. So output is yaw velocity, input is steering angle. Output is uh, lateral velocity, you say input is um, uh, your steering angle. So um, that is what we are going to uh, understand today, uh, derive the uh, uh, equation from the known equation what we derived. So from the kinematic principle, we have these equations written. The Roman letter one is this equation, right? Where we have a kinematic uh, description that the requirement of steering angle is depends upon L by R, alpha F and alpha R. So this is first equation that we had. And then uh, we looked at our uh, um, uh, bicycle model uh, for pure cornering, two governing equations that we derived and we represented them as a state space form. So I'm going to start from this point uh, today's lecture, right? So this is lecture number. Twenty three and today's date is six ten twenty twenty one. What is that we are going to do is an important equation. So we are in lateral dynamics through bicycle model. Right? Through bicycle model. And I'm going to write uh, important equation so far what we have done. Important equations. So equation number one is uh, the steering angle requirement delta F is L by R, where L is wheelbase, R is turning radius, minus alpha F plus alpha R. We have uh, derived this equation. This was Roman letter one equation. If you look at near notes earlier, right? And this is basically from kinematics of bicycle model. And then the second equation, uh, what we had is from the governing equation that we deduced from Newton Euler equation, uh, general frame of equations for uh, space vehicle. Uh, and then we deduced with an appropriate assumptions uh, to the ground vehicle. And uh, we have finally got two equations uh, for our pure cornering, right? Uh, those equations, what we derived is one is the first equation. What is the rate of change of lateral velocity was given by minus of C alpha F plus C alpha R by MU. Uh, into V plus minus AC alpha F plus BC alpha R by MU minus U into R. So here V is later velocity, R is yaw velocity. Those are called the state variables in state equation and V dot is the rate of change of lateral velocity plus C alpha F by M into delta F. So this was the equation number two, Roman letter number two we have derived in our earlier class. And then another equation from bicycle model is uh, minus A C Sir, alpha F. Yeah. Uh, in the first equation, it's uh, alpha R. One of yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So this is alpha R. Right, and this minus sign plus sign to be carefully accounted. This, uh, you know, we have considered a CAE coordinate system. SAE coordinate system, right? The SAE coordinate system is uh, stretching your three fingers, uh, not in this fashion, in a tilted way. So, middle finger represent forward direction, and uh, sorry, uh, thumb uh, index represent forward direction. Middle finger represent uh, from left to right your positive y axis, and thumb goes inside the ground. So, this is that axis system fixed at your uh, uh, CG location of your vehicle, and then we have defined this uh, all, right? That is that. Uh, first kinematic relationship we had. And then we were able to substitute for alpha F, alpha R and so on. 
uh, into this equation uh, of your cornering. Uh, that's what I'm just writing. Uh, let's first uh, write down this and recollect these equations uh, so that we are uh, on mark to add further understanding of transfer functions. So uh, this R dot is given by uh, a c alpha f plus b c alpha r. When I write this, you know what is a? a is front axle uh, CG location from front axle. B is CG location from the rear axle. C alpha f is uh, uh, linear cornering stiffness of my tire in front axle tire. C alpha r is a uh, linear cornering stiffness of my rear axle uh, wheel of my bicycle model and so on. So like that, you should be able to describe. It's not new to you. You are familiar with this. Uh, so these are called the vehicle parameters, geometrical and its mass and uh, inertial parameters, right? So this uh, into V plus minus A squared C alpha F minus B squared C alpha R by I Z Z U into R plus a c alpha f by i z z into delta f that's my third equation so how are these two equations are obtained uh, and those are obtained from uh, having uh, pure cornering governing equation governing equation so what are pure cornering governing equation it was Fy is equal to Fyf plus Fyr. That's what equal to Mv dot plus Mru. And Mz is equal to Afyf minus Bfyr. That was equal to Izzr dot. So having these two governing equations, uh, we were able to substitute for FIF and FIR from the tire uh, in terms of tire cornering stiffness, that is minus C alpha F alpha F minus C alpha R alpha R into these two equations. And we were able to deduce this equation number two and three, uh, uh, which we were able to represent as a convenient form called the state space form. So that's what is that, uh, our fourth equation, Roman letter uh, four in our um, uh, class that we have already derived. So what was that equation? Let me just put that uh, V dot R dot. That's equal to. So we had uh, here minus C alpha F plus C alpha R by MU uh, minus A C alpha F plus B C alpha alpha R by MU minus u and uh, you have minus a c alpha f plus b c alpha r by i z z u i'm just combining these coefficients here i'm, I'm rewriting that looking at equation two and three written above uh, minus a squared c alpha f plus b squared c alpha r by i z z u into V R, which are state variable. And that's plus these this two if I combine it C alpha F by M A C alpha F by I Z Z into delta F. So this was equation number four you can witness from our previous class. And uh, the beauty of this equation four is it is in an, uh, an important form uh, called uh, state space form. Space form. Let us look at the state space form all uh, again in detail once we get into stability uh, analysis in more detail. At the time being, so this equation is called Q dot equals A times Q plus B vector times uh, uh, U. Uh, this delta F here is what is my fifth equation. And uh, the fourth equation is what is written in this form as what is called the state equation. This is what is called state equation. 
right uh, and then an important uh, uh, most important equation that we have seen uh, maybe for the last two hours of our lectures we were more harping on it to understand physical insight of vehicle handling behavior called an understeer behavior oversteer behavior and the neutral steer behavior and we understand that uh, the bicycle model uh, steady state cornering equation alone uh, may not be um, uh, that uh, uh, replicating the real time practical scenario uh, of a vehicle drive that is why we had to uh, understand something called the handling diagram or uh, what are various tests that are conducted for vehicle handling characteristics we looked at in the last class um constant radius test constant speed test and constant steer angle test and so on right and so this is all the background and these tests were conducted basically in the steady state motion of your vehicle so what do you mean by steady state motion of your vehicle you know that it's only one governing equation and that governing equation was the sixth equation what we derived in the last class that was delta f equals l by r plus k u s into u squared by g into r and this was the most fundamental equation of steady state motion what is this equation called it is the fundamental equation equation for steady state motion fundamental equation of steady state motion of your bicycle model a steady state motion uh, in cornering that's the cornering motion so what is this kus it is called an understeer coefficient and that was given by kus is equal to wf by c alpha f minus wr by c alpha r So the unit of kus is in radians right so that means uh, load is newton c alpha f is newton per radians so you get radians and the l by r is uh, geometrical parameters and uh, units so this delta f in radians that you get so if you have to get it in degrees you know how to convert the radian into um, degrees right yeah so this is uh, understeer coefficient and uh, dictated by front tire compliance and the rear tire compliance and we have seen that this can be positive or negative or zero accordingly we have our vehicle nature <clears throat> and uh, how did we get this equation uh, number this is equation number 6 uh, roman letter we have uh, uh, represented like that in our ela lecture right so this we have got it from uh, steady state cornering governing equation that's essentially fy is only m r u and m is at equal 0 so these are the governing equation for steady state motion in cornering right in this cornering is what high speed or um, mid speed cornering correct it is of mid high speeds low speed cornering we may not be considering this uh, uh, even your uh, uh, mru your centrifugal force also may not be considered right so that we will see in one particular lecture what do you mean by low speed cornering so so for what i did in this slide is what does that uh, just to have written down these important equations so far what we have looked at in our bicycle model for lateral dynamic study of our passenger car right so i hope you do not have any doubts in these equations six equations what are they refer to so i am going to do now uh, looking at this equation number 2 and equation number 3 uh, these two equation i am going to take equation number 2 and 3 is what i am going to take uh, let me just take that two equation go ahead with the, the class just something i am not able to copy yeah 
right? So I'm just going to take these two equations and I'm going to do today's class. Uh, okay, so these two equations I'm going to write in an another convenient form uh, now. Uh, so that uh, our objective of today's class to find out the transfer functions what we mentioned in the beginning, right? So this equation two and three now. Uh, I'm going to rewrite uh, how I'm going to take these terms on the other side. So this uh, uh, you can see here M is present. Oh, just a minute. You can see here uh, in this equation, there's M, 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 all the three terms, I, Z, Z, I, Z, Z, I, Z, Z. So I'm taking this on the other side uh, and then take all the terms other than the input term uh, you know, on the left hand side. So if I do so, I can rewrite my equations in this fashion. So M, 0, 0, I, Z, Z. I'm making it as two by two matrix. And uh, I'm just taking this B dot R dot vector. I'm going to combine these two equations, except an input on one side, the rest on the other side, right? So how this equation changes? See this minus sign that side when it has gone. First I take M out and take it on this side, and is that uh, I Z is that out and take it on this side? That's how this matrix comes. Now I'm going to take uh, the terms coefficients and this V, the coefficient and R all on the other side. And I'm going to make uh, another matrix times V and R. So when I take this sign changes would be there, you have to carefully uh, look at them. So this is going to be C alpha F plus C alpha R by U. Now it's only U because M is already taken out. And uh, yes, C alpha F, See this minus sign has changed now. Minus B C alpha R by U minus here it's U, but the M I have taken out. So this term will have M. So it is M U. And here it is I Z is taken out. So it is uh, A C alpha F plus B C alpha R by U. Uh, uh, here, uh, here you have to look at. So this is minus so this term will be uh, changed now so this is uh, minus b c alpha r and uh, here uh, this minus goes off so that's going to be plus a squared c alpha f plus b squared c alpha r by u this matrix into v r And this all on now left hand side and on that side, right hand side I have B mat B vector that C alpha F and A C alpha F into delta F. So this equation let's call equation number seven, normal letter equation number seven. So I can also have my governing equation of bicycle model, which are for pure cornering uh, these two equations uh, in this form. Right, so I have here a, a matrix two by two, and here a matrix, and here. Why did I write? You no, know, you would uh, uh, definitely would have got it by this time. Those are very good at mathematics uh, and linear algebra. You would appreciate that this form of writing would uh, help us to convert these differential equations. Right? Uh, these are first order differential equation because the first derivatives are appearing into an algebraic form of equation. So if I write an algebraic form of equation, that is going to help me to get my transfer function so easily. That's why will, it is right now. Yeah. We will take transforms. What transform? I'm not going to take uh, Laplace transform. Yeah, we will do okay. that later on. See, there are okay. many ways to do. Uh, there are. Uh, you're right. You are absolutely correct. Very good. So there are many ways to do uh, converting an ordinary uh, differential equation into an algebraic form by doing it. So uh, there are many transforms available. One important transform is what is called a Laplace transform. If I do that in this, I'll get my uh, algebraic form. I can also substitute my trial solutions. What we have looked at in basic uh, mechanical vibration. 
uh, of this uh, V and R, I can also get my uh, uh, algebraic form. So there are many routes to get that. I'm going to follow a particular method and to get my algebraic form of this. So I'm converting this differential equation of Roman letter seven into an algebraic form by substituting uh, um, let, by substituting uh, V R. So the total uh, uh, no represent a vector quantity. That's equal to V R the amplitude times E raised to S T. So I just consider this function as V R vector, and its differential is what V dot R dot. That's going to be. Uh, here v dot no that's not v dot uh, v r because time derivative here and it's going to be s e raised to st so substituting these two in equation number seven i will be able to have my algebraic equation so what is my algebraic equation so substituting for this here thus i will have this and I will have uh, yes would be a constant called a, it's not constant it's called a Laplace variable. Laplace variable. I'm not taking Laplace transform. I'm representing my trial solution of this uh, uh, differential equation by this uh, exponential function where this yes in this equation is a Laplace variable called. So in uh, Laplace plane, uh, uh, you would represent your uh, transfer function. That's something called a characteristic uh, equation. Uh, in uh, stability analysis, you say, here we are going to get uh, what is called a characteristic polynomial, right? We'll, we'll see that now. Uh, so this S is what is uh, Laplace variable. So uh, this equation now, uh, substitution would change this equation seven in this form. I'm just going to write it. So what does that? I will have uh, substituting this. There is an S here variable that get multiplied inside. So it's going to be MS 0, 0, I, Z, Z, S. And I will have outside the E raised to ST. And when I substitute this here, I will have E raised to ST. Right? So um, um, Z raised to ST, uh, uh, you don't require that. That's common there that can be on this side uh, get, right? So let's just substitute this and see what's happening. Uh, with the, uh, when you substitute, this is all with the zero, with the zero initial conditions. That's very important, right? Zero initial conditions. When you substitute this plus, uh, when I put that here, I will have the same matrix here, whatever that you have. So that is C alpha F plus C alpha R by U. Uh, and that is A C alpha F minus B C alpha R by U minus M U. Uh, here A C alpha F minus B C alpha R by U. A squared C alpha F plus B squared C alpha R by U. Uh, uh, into um, this V R E raised to ST. So that's nothing but V R, right? And on the other side of the equation, it's going to be C alpha F A C alpha F into delta F. So look at now. So this is common for both. Look at now. Uh, uh, this terms now two addition of these two matrix if I combine what is that I'll have uh, I'll have here now it is ms plus c alpha f plus c alpha r by u and zero plus this term so that's a c alpha f minus b c alpha r by u minus m u and here it is zero plus this term so it's a c alpha f minus B C alpha R by U. And if I uh, uh, add that, it's going to be I Z Z S plus A squared C alpha F plus B squared C alpha R by U. <clears throat> so this all into 
we are at the other side it is c alpha f a c alpha f into delta f so this equation is the roman letter 8 equation right so this equation is what it is a beautiful equation you do not have here uh, derivatives and you have only two uh, variables um, um, that's v and r uh, and uh, uh, this is in this famous form uh, in linear algebra uh, textbooks if you look at it is called a c matrix into x what is b this is that form uh, from linear algebra book you can see any linear algebra book you'll see two simultaneous uh, algebraic equations so these are called an algebraic equation so this equation 8 is what algebraic equations so i have a set of algebraic equation uh, representing my bicycle model now right and this uh, uh, advantage of writing in this form is what is that i can find out this uh, two variables variables uh, what are those uh, lateral velocity and uh, yaw velocity uh, as function of or can be determined as a ratio of two determinants that's what is called a cramer rule we have studied cramer what does cramer rule states it states that every every variable so here there are two variables in a set of linear algae algebraic algebraic bra i c algebraic equations can be expressed as the ratios of two determinants two determinants so this is what is the classical statement of cramer rule in linear algebra when you have a set of differential uh, sorry algebraic equation so that helps us to now get our uh, job done what is that our uh, task and job is to find out the transfer function so what is my transfer function one transfer function is lateral velocity transfer function so that is delta v by delta so let me put it in another way first transfer function is lateral velocity transfer function so what is that is output is my lateral velocity input is my known uh, um, steering input so for the given front wheel uh, steer axle uh, steering input what is my lateral velocity if i get that's what is my transfer function so how do i get the transfer function is ratios of two polynomials i'll have numerator polynomial i'll have denominator polynomial and those polynomials would be uh, function of um, yes right uh, in laplace variable so that's what we have to derive what does this is what i have to derive so how do i get that is by uh, the ratios of two determinants so what are the two determinants here what are the two determinants here can anyone say look at equation number eight so you have to replace the column of c matrix by uh, this b vector what is there here right so and then uh, you would be able to write a variable so if i have to write v that is the determinant replacing this column by a forcing column that is c alpha and ac alpha elements here that's a numerator determinant divided by this determinant uh, c determinant itself matrix uh, c determinant itself and that would give me v equals this and the delta f is what is brought down so i get my transfer function here like that 
So what does my numerator determinant? It is going to be the C uh, matrix uh, determining first column will be replaced by a forcing column that is C alpha F and A C alpha F. And uh, I'll have my second uh, column as it is. What is it? It is A C alpha F minus B C alpha R by U minus M U. And I Z is at yes plus a squared c alpha f plus b squared c alpha r by u so this determinant is numerator determinant divided by delta so what is this delta this delta is determinant of c matrix so determinant of c matrix would give me what that would give me characteristic polynomial so what is delta here? It's C matrix determinant. Or you say determinant of C matrix. And uh, that's what is called characteristic polynomial. So I will have uh, from the numerator determinant a polynomial. See there is a variable S here. So first order polynomial. <coughs> I'll have denominator polynomial. Here is a characteristic polynomial of my model. And that will be a quadratic equation. So if you look at the transfer function is called proper transfer function or strictly proper transfer function looking at the order of two polynomials. So in this case, it is a proper uh, order function because I'll have a first order polynomial in a, a numerator and second order polynomial in the denominator. Let me work out this. <clears throat> so if I understand this process, it's just a procedure now. I have a transfer function called a lateral velocity transfer function. So what is my lateral velocity response for the uh, given steering input, known input, is what is this transfer function definition, output by input. And I get that uh, uh, here. Similarly, I can also get an, another variable in my algebraic equation, say, is R. So yaw velocity transfer function. Well, the difference is in C matrix, uh, C determinant, uh, the second column would be replaced by this and you'll have the same definition. All right. So let's find out now what is this uh, delta or what is this characteristic polynomial. So this characteristic polynomial, how do we get? It is determinant of uh, 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 this. So let me just to find out that uh, polynomial by finding this determinant. So ms plus uh, c alpha f plus c alpha r by u is the first term, a11. a12 is a c alpha f minus b c alpha r by u plus m u. And third term, uh, that is a21 here is a c alpha f minus b c alpha r by u. And here I have I Z Z S plus A squared C alpha F plus B squared C alpha R by U. So this is very, uh, no, you would like to do this uh, determinant and the grouping them. And you know, you'll see the nice uh, quadratic equation that we are going to get. So if I have to find the determinant, I know the rules that will be applied. So this cross product. Uh, sorry, uh, this term uh, a11 into a22 minus a21 into a12. So that's what I am going to do. So that's going to be uh, i yes i uh, m into i z z uh, s square, and then I multiply with this. So that's going to be plus i z z c alpha f plus c alpha r by u. So first term I take and multiply both. And then I take second term and multiply with both. So that's going to be m a squared c alpha f plus m b squared c alpha r by u. Yes, m s into this I do. So into s into s plus plus. Uh, I have to multiply now these two terms. So that is C alpha F 
plus C alpha R by U multiplied by A squared C alpha F plus B squared C alpha R by U by U. So I have done what? Uh, this is in this what form? A11, A12, A21, A22. So first I did now A11, A22. So for minus A21, A12, I'm going to do. So that's going to be minus uh, <coughs> of AC alpha F minus BC alpha R by U into a c alpha f minus b c alpha r by u plus m u right uh, am i right uh, yeah so first i should have multiplied this first term and this so that's correct so this is what is uh, my delta so let's now work out this uh, and then get a group them uh, that I'll have a quadratic equation. So you can see here, uh, I have now coefficient of uh, S square, I will get the coefficient of S, I will get, and there is a constant term I'll get. So the quadratic equation uh, is what I'm going to get now. So uh, when I, when I uh, do that here, it's going to be <coughs> M I is a is at S square plus I'm going to group all S term. So I have here this. This is the S and this is also right. This is all uh, uh, in bracket. Um, I, this is in all bracket for this. Please look at it again once again. Uh, when I multiply with this cross product, uh, first term is this. And I multiply with this, uh, this uh, will have a S coefficient, and then similarly with this, uh, uh, this and MS would have a uh, thing, and common S I have taken out like this. So now uh, I will have a uh, grouping of this I is that is that C alpha F. So let me look at C alpha F in both, and I take them. So it is I is that is that. In color. I is that is that plus M M A squared into C alpha F plus I is that is that coefficient of C alpha R plus M B squared into C alpha R and uh, denominator is common U so I'll have here U. So this is all uh, what is a coefficient of S. Yes. So if I have to get my characteristic polynomial of my bicycle model or vehicle, you are given mass I, Z, Z, and A, B, C, alpha, F, C, alpha, R. You can substitute and get the quadratic equation. Right? That's what is that uh, characteristic polynomial. This is just uh, uh, with the variables I'm working out without any values. Right? So um, this. And then now I have to multiply this. That's going to be a constant term. So how is it going to be now? Let us do that. It's interesting again. Uh, so let me just multiply with this plus uh, C alpha F into this. So it's going to be A squared C alpha F squared uh, by U by see this U and U. So that's going to be U squared. And then again, uh, uh, this term and this term we look at. It's going to be plus B squared to C alpha R squared by U squared. And again, uh, you look at this, this uh, B squared C alpha F C alpha R. This is A squared C alpha F C alpha R. So I'm going to have uh, A squared to C alpha F C alpha R by U squared plus B squared C alpha F C alpha R by U squared. So that's from these two products. And then here, uh, no plus minus term very carefully I should work out. Uh, so here you'll have first term when I multiply this A, A squared minus term. So minus A squared C alpha F squared by U squared minus 
B squared C alpha R square by U square. Right, this C minus into minus plus, and this is outside minus. And then again, uh, uh, what is that I have here when I multiply this term with this, I have minus A, B, C alpha, F, C alpha, R, or minus or minus become plus. So plus A, B, C alpha, F, C alpha, R by U square. And similarly, uh, if I multiply with this, this minus and minus plus. So it's A, B, C alpha, F, C alpha, R by U square. And of course, I'll have uh, this term that's going to be. Sir, this will be minus uh, AB because minus minus plus and into minus. Which one? Third last term? Yes, uh, this should. Look at look at here. This is minus and uh, minus of uh, outside minus. is minus. So that's yes, become. Sir. Yeah. And then it yeah. again multiplied with. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> right. See, this is very interesting because this term, this term goes up, this term, this term goes up, right? I'm going to simplify this equation very nicely. So now uh, let us complete this. So this multiplication with the mu also is there, right? So if I do so, I will have now here uh, uh, minus of minus minus a uh, uh, c alpha f into m uh, by u. And uh, if I multiply that uh, that uh, plus m b c alpha r by u uh, that's all equal to zero sorry not equal to zero i'm sorry uh, that's what is this this side what i have rhs is what is my characteristic polynomial so this is all what is equal to delta right so now uh, let's group this ends again it's interesting uh, uh, this term is going to be m i z z s square plus i z z plus m e square by u i'll take that all common into c alpha f plus i z z plus m b square to c alpha r is all by u into s and this term here uh, look at that <coughs> going to be now uh, here c alpha f c alpha product is there everywhere so that if i take it out common i a squared plus b squared plus 2 a b so what does it a plus b whole square right so i just do that alone here these four terms if i look at so what is that i have here a common factor c alpha f and c alpha by u square if i take that out it's a squared plus b squared plus 2 a b that's a plus b whole square so that's going to be l because you know L is equal to A plus B, right? That's real base. So I'll have my equation now so much simplified as this. This is going to be uh, plus L square C alpha F C alpha R by U square. So these all four terms are now become this one single term. And here, of course, I have, so that is uh, M, into b c alpha r minus a c alpha f uh, by u right so in this uh, two terms these are the two terms constant terms here these two terms are the constant terms here i'm just going to combine these two add these two so this is going to be m i z z s squared plus of course, this uh, term i z z plus m a square uh, into c alpha f plus i z z plus m b square um, into c alpha r by u into s plus I'll take this term out. Let's say l squared c alpha f c alpha r. If I take that out u square out it's going to be one plus i love to multiply with the reciprocal right so if i do so that's going to be m into b c alpha r minus a c alpha f by u multiplied by u squared by l squared c alpha f c alpha r 
right so this is again uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, thing to look at uh, i have this u squared alone so if i take this here inside this is going to be uh, like this i'm going to take it like this uh, so this term constant term uh, i'm going to take it uh, this way so i have uh, coefficient of s square i have coefficient of s plus this term i'm going to rewrite as l square c alpha f c alpha r by u square uh, yeah u square into 1 plus k3 u square that's what is my delta right so what is k3 in this this k3 look at here u square term i'm holding it so i'll take this all uh, right k3 u k3 u or u square this u and u goes off so this is k3 u right k3 u not u square so this goes out so k3 is uh, m into b c alpha r minus a c alpha f by l squared c alpha f c alpha r so if i know my vehicle mass and i know my cg location and tire cornering stiffness i am able to get what is this k3 called and this k3 is what is called the stability factor we don't call this as an uh, understeer gradient. This is an another form. So they are all related. Uh, so this is what is called the stability factor when you do a stability analysis. So stability analysis is what is free vibrational study. So I have to make, uh, this is now the governing equation is what is the forcing function is that? Delta is that uh, the input. When I make input zero, what is that I have is uh, a steering zero. That means my vehicle is supposed to go in a straight line. And um, uh, um, I should have my, equilibrium uh, dynamic equilibrium ensured so that study is what is stability analysis we'll see at that time but at the moment you remember this k3 as stability factor i will revisit uh, will take back to this later on uh, and this is what is my delta now i have got my delta so what is delta is the characteristic polynomial and i have my characteristic polynomial and uh, I can find out uh, my um, numerator polynomial from here and I can substitute that. So the ratios are two polynomials and that is what is called a transfer function. Lateral velocity transfer function. So I, I think you would be able to do that quickly and uh, see uh, what are the terms that comes and, uh, and I would uh, make you uh, uh, do for a uh, yaw velocity uh, transfer function as a homework and those two transfer function is what i'm going to take further to explain you in our class so let's now look at uh, uh, what is this uh, transfer function v by delta so if i work out the numerator uh, uh, numerator uh, determinant i would have my numerator determinant goes like this uh, I would have finally it is I is that is that C alpha F into S minus M A U C alpha F plus uh, L B C alpha F C alpha R by U. So you can see here uh, this term is what is constant term. So this is S its coefficient. And here uh, I have uh, now these two terms. So this plus into this. So this is my constant term. And first order for uh, a linear equation, first order uh, algebraic equation. And divided by our uh, S squared plus delta into S plus L squared C alpha of C alpha R by U square into one plus K3 U. So this is what is that. 
and this is what is called the transfer function. So if I have my vehicle data given to you and I can substitute this all values here, I will have uh, V by delta as uh, um, an equation. Uh, here it is a linear equation because the order is yes, one, one here. And uh, denominator is a quadratic equation because order is two. So that's what is my transfer function, right? Similarly, I can get the R by delta. So R by delta, how do you get? I will have uh, now <coughs> the same uh, way representing uh, this. So forcing function of column is C alpha F, C A C alpha F uh, in this. And this term uh, would be same as what is there in your C matrix. So C matrix is this. So M S C alpha F that would be same as it is here. So that term would be M S plus C alpha F plus C alpha R uh, by U. And A C alpha F minus B C alpha R by U. So this determinant is the numerator determinant divided by delta. So what does that we have it here? And that would result into uh, into a polynomial and that polynomial here is what is uh, your transfer function of yaw velocity transfer function. So I will just put the result here and I will ask you to cross check. So M A C alpha F into S. So here you see I Z Z to C alpha F and here M A C alpha F into S plus L into C alpha F into C alpha R by U by delta. So that was the transfer function. So these two transfer functions are now expressed as function of Laplace variable and uh, you are going to study in your vehicle dynamics, especially when you are involved with testing and uh, uh, measurements. You would have to know um, the same transfer function is what is uh, represented as. Um, uh, so this transfer function application, what is the advantage of having it? This transfer functions, right, can be called the frequency response function. Function, if I replace this S by J omega, J omega, and the J omega, so omega is what is the frequency of excitation what we have looked at. So this Laplace variable, if I ch change by J omega in this, so I have numerator S squared S, uh, so denominator, numerator I have S. So if I put that and substitute, and then I have my real part and imaginary part, and I'll have uh, my magnitude and my phase angle. And that function is what is called the frequency response function in frequency domain, and the transfer function in Laplace domain. This is in frequency domain. And uh, I would be able to get something what is called the steady state gain. So when steady state gain would be obtained, when I have my transfer function in a steady state motion, right? I know uh, now whatever algebraic equation you derived is not a steady state motion. Those equations are derived for pure cornering, where your variables are varying. You have V dot and R dot. But in steady state motion, you know V and R are constant. So when they are constant, how this transfer function is going to be, that's going to lead to a value called a steady state gain. So how do you get that? That could be obtained by V by delta when S tends to zero. R, R by delta when S tends to zero. So in this, if I substitute S tends to zero, you know, in numerator I have a constant term, denominator also I have a constant term in the polynomial. So the coefficient uh, on the term uh, involved with S and S square in denominator, S in numerator disappears. I'll have the ratios and that become uh, what is called a steady state gain. What is the advantage of having steady state gain? 
So determining the steady state gain would help you to have a classical comparison of the set of vehicle handling characteristics. So that's what is uh, our objective. So in the next class, we will take this uh, transfer function and then apply this S tends to zero and you'll get a steady state gain. So you may wonder why S tends to zero. That's coming from in Laplace transform or in a Laplace transform theory called an initial value theory, final value theory that you have studied. So final value theorem is what does when T tends to zero in your uh, time function and an equivalence in your uh, uh, T tends to infinity and equivalence in your Laplace domain is S tends to zero. So when T tends to infinity referring to what when I give some input, I would not uh, immediately look at my uh, response because that will have two component transient response as well as particular integral response that's called a steady state response. The combination is what will be there for some time. And then uh, when T approaches infinity, if I wait for some sustainable time, the transient effect would change. So that's what when I do cornering, I suddenly accelerate and decelerate to adjust my speed to have a constant speed test, right? So you know, one thing is before entering the test track, you adjust it all and then get into a constant speed. Or you are there suddenly, uh, um, your actuator, your, uh, your accelerating or braking, uh, no, then it is a transient effect. Uh, that would vary the speed. But you do that uh, for some time to get your constant speed during cornering uh, for a constant speed test to do on the test track. And that time you will have some transient effect and that transient effect to be removed. And that's why you take a response as T tends to infinity. What is the response is what is the steady state response and that the equivalence in your Laplace domain is what is corresponding to S tends to zero given by final value theorem. Right. So let's uh, stop at this point uh, and we we'll continue uh, from these transfer function. How do you get uh, these steady state gains and then there are additional steady state gain called lateral acceleration gain uh, and then curvature gain or body slip angle gain. So there are five uh, important steady state gains uh, which are required for characterizing or um, uh, ranking your vehicle for its handling capability. Uh, and that's what uh, will be the next lecture on Monday we will have. And uh, with that, I stop today's lecture. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, I will stop at this point of time.